Miami, además de ser la capital del sol de los Estados Unidos y contar con increíbles playas, tiene una de las locaciones que mantiene a científicos de todas partes del mundo curiosos con sus misterios. Estoy hablando de este castillo de coral que tiene una historia de amor muy, muy triste. Pero mejor dejaré que Kent, el guía principal, les cuente la historia. Welcome to Coral Castle. My name's Ken and I'm going to be your tour guide today. And uh, this is the entrance that Ed made right here. He wrote all of that up top there. And uh, he was an amazing individual. Now, he was born in 1887 over in Riga, Latvia. Now, that's in between Lithuania and Estonia. And when he was in his mid-20s, well, he fell in love. Yeah, he fell in love with a young lady he called his sweet 16. Agnes Gus. He was 26 and she was 16. Now they got engaged, they even set the date for the wedding. And the night before the wedding, she goes to him, she says, Ed, I'm sorry, this just isn't gonna work. And poor Ed was devastated. So he decided to leave Regalafia. Came over to North America in 1912. And he landed in New York. Worked across North America going west. Now, he worked in the mines for about eight years. And in 1920, he was in Portland, Oregon. And there, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. So back in the day, the only cure they knew about, fresh air and sunshine. So he came down here to South Florida, landed in Florida City. Worked for a local family down there called the Mosiers. They were so happy with him that they gave him one acre of land. So that's a pretty nice deal. So he started his own business and he called it Rock Gate Park. Now that was the first of two castles that he built. This is number two. He was down at the first castle for about 12 or 13 years. He just thought he could do better if he's closer to a highway because he was way down the woods. Nobody could find him. So he came up here in 1936. He bought 10 acres of land for 12 bucks. Now he was truly amazing. Not as amazing as doing this in 1940. He had no satellite GPS. He had no lasers. He had no fancy computers. He had a little compass, maybe a sextant, and he used his noggin. Now, I know that's a lost concept, but that's what he did. But the man was brilliant. He was always seen down in the library, reading up on whatever he was working on. He loved mathematics and physics, geometry, astrology, astronomy, and all the sciences. And then he would come back here and he would make whatever he was working on. And that's where his genius really came in. Ed only had a fourth grade education. He spoke five languages, but he was a brilliant, brilliant man. And the key thing with Ed was, the man had a thirst for knowledge. He wanted to learn. Now, this is truly a scientific wonder here. This is Ed's sundial. Now, the shadows cast off this piece of metal right here, and it shines down on these numbers, and it tells you what time it is. And when the corner of that shadow gets to this line right here, it'll be 12 o'clock noon. Now, Ed worked from nine to four, that's pretty simple. The curvature of the bowl represents the curvature of the Earth at 23.5 degrees inverted. The black lines here represent the path of the Earth around the sun. So this is a calendar by month, not by day, a seasonal calendar and a timepiece that's accurate within one minute. It's the only one in the world to our knowledge like this. After Ed passed away, his friend and attorney cleaned out his apartment up there with his wife, with his, the attorney's wife, and they found $3,500 in $100 bills hidden in a little pipe. They almost missed it. But his wife went in there with her finger and started pulling out $100 bills. And uh, that's a lot of money, especially back in the day. Now, I don't believe he found, he made that much money off the front gate there at 25 cents a person. We think he sold part of his forest to the government because the government was buying up all the Dade County pine they could find To help rebuild the roads and the bridges to Key West. Lamentablemente, este cuento no tiene un final feliz como el que muchos esperábamos. 
pero es muestra de que con y por amor se pueden lograr cosas increíbles.